Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak in support of the National Health Amendment General Co-Payment Bill 2022, and I welcome the measures on behalf of the people of Warringah that these measures are intended to appease the cost of living crisis in a small way that is affecting so many Australians. I have to say I was shocked and disappointed to learn just the extent to which people have been impacted by the cost of the uh, current general co-payment. When provided with the numbers, it is quite staggering to understand the extent to which it has had an impact. Ease of access to health care should be a right afforded to all in Australia. And unfortunately, it's clear that the current co-payment rate of $42.50 per script has been too expensive for a large segment of our population. Reducing the maximum co-payment to a cap to $30 per script will be a welcome relief to many people. According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, some 900,000 Australians either delayed purchasing medication or missed scripts refills altogether between 2019 and 2020 due to the prohibitive costs of medicines on the PBS. That's really quite a shocking number, and it's unacceptable that any Australian should be forced to forego regular health care due to cost. It's not, I think, the Australia that we aspire to be or the goal from legislation in this place. So I welcome the 29 per cent saving on PBS medicine costs that will benefit Australians and help to appease some of the cost of living strains currently experienced. We must remember that patients are often prescribed multiple concurrent scripts at a time, and some one in five Australians live with chronic conditions that require perpetual treatment. So whilst we're incredibly lucky to have a subsidised health care in Australia, the cost of the general co-payment when applied to each script can add up very quickly. And it can be a substantial cost to individuals to keep themselves and their families healthy. We should not and cannot allow health care to become unaffordable, even under a subsidised scheme. So if passed, and I sincerely hope it will be, this should have bipartisan support of everyone in this place. The bill will positively impact approximately 19 million Australians who will be eligible for savings when accessing medicines on the pharmaceutical benefit scheme. The savings to individuals will be substantial, with those filling a single monthly script estimated to save nearly $150 per year. For those filling multiple scripts each month, the savings will continue to increase accordingly. So I support this bill and I urge the government to ensure that um, access to medications is not compromised with a more affordable uh, cost. We must ensure supply always meets demand and we may see a sharp increase in uptake and, we must, and I certainly hope that there has been preparation for this. I see, and I seek the government's assurance that the co-payment reduction is the most efficient way to improve affordability to PBS medication. Affordability, access to, affordable access to health care needs to be the core goal of the amendment, with the benefits being afforded directly to the Australian public. In Moringa, constitu constituents are seeking my help to combat cost of living pressures. Many are doing it tough, and it is expected that things will get worse. We need to appease cost of living pressures, and I certainly hope there will be more announcements from the government in the upcoming budget. But in the meantime, I believe this bill seeks to do this in part and is a good first step. The government needs to implement this correctly and thoughtfully to ensure access and quality is not compromised at any stage, of course. It's not a luxury to have access, and quality to, access to quality health care. It always must be ensured. As a federal representative in this place, we must implement reasonable improvements to access and affordability of health care. And I'm aware there are many more things that need to be addressed and changed, but I welcome this first initial step.